Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 106, and what I'd like to discuss today is electric fields. Now, an electric field is defined as the region around a charged object in which the electric forces act. We define it as the force per unit charge. And it's similar to a gravitational field in, um, for example, the Earth's gravitational field. So if we have a charged sphere, such as a Van de Graaff generator, and it's charged with a certain amount of excess charges around that uh, Van de Graaff generator sphere, there will be an electric field. The biggest difference between an electric field and a gravitational field is that the gravitational field is affected by the mass of the objects. In, a, in an electric field, it's a consistent value depend, independent of the charge itself. So the electric field is based on the um, charged object, not the charges within the field. Now, because we have two different directions that um, electric charges can act, either repulsive or attractive, we have to define the direction of the electric field by convention. And what we've defined it as is the direction a positive test charge will move within the field. For example, if we have a positive electric field caused by a Van de Graaff generator, then any positive test charge will move away from the Van de Graaff generator if placed within the field. It acts outside the actual sphere because inside of an electric um, conductor, there is no electric field present. So the electric field is always defined as what would happen to a proton. And I remember it this way. What would a proton do? WWPD. And if you always remember what would a proton do, then you'll know the direction an electric field acts. Now that um, is defined for a proton, but an electron or a negatively charged particle would act opposite that direction. So for example, back to the electric uh, field for the Van de Graaff generator, if it's a positive field, then an electron would move towards the Van de Graaff. Similar to what would happen if I placed an object in the Earth's gravitational field and let it go. It would fall towards the surface of the Earth. So electric fields can, can be repulsive or attractive depending upon what goes in it. However, we always define the field as what would happen if a proton were placed within it. Now there's an equation that allows us to calculate the electric field. And as I said before, it's the force per unit charge. So the electric field is defined as F divided by Q. Now we don't always know the force. So remember the Coulomb's law equation, KQQ over R squared. Well, if we put that in for F, what we'll end up having is KQQ over R squared over Q. Now the Q on the top and bottom will cancel, and that's the test charges charge. So it's the charge of the object that's in the field. So if we cancel that out, we end up with KQ over R squared for the electric field. Now that means we have two equations that allow us to calculate for the electric field. It's either E equals F over Q or KQ over R squared. Now, if it's e equals F over Q, that Q is the charge of the test charge that's in the field. If it's KQ over R squared, the Q is for the um, object that is creating the field. So in the example of the Van de Graaff generator, that would be the net charge of the Van de Graaff generator itself. So we can handle either um, knowing the charge uh, that's in the field, or we can know the charge of the thing that's creating the field. Now that allows us to solve for any different problem that, can, that we can be faced with. Now that being said, the units for the electric field are newtons per coulomb. Force is newtons, charge is coulomb. So it's newtons divided by coulombs. What we can do is calculate a number of different electric fields caused by multiple objects. We may have multiple spheres and we're able to calculate the electric field due to each. Since it's a vector quantity, we're going to have to deal with vector addition to find the resultant of all the individual 
um, charges. So we could have a single Van de Graaff, multiple Van de Graaffs. We could even have charged spheres. Um, and demonstrations in, in the laboratory setting will often use um, metallic paint to denote a charged area um, on paper. And the metallic paint will cause a charged region around it or an electric field around that, that region. What we can do from this point is do a couple of calculations dealing with the electric field and show how we can handle different types of uh, problems that we'll, we're faced with. But in conclusion, the electric field is the region around a charged object in which other charges will interact. And we always use a positive test charge to figure out the direction of the electric field. So although it's a vector, it's a little tricky because it can be away or towards um, the original um, object. That being said, the test charge is always what would a proton do? And let's take out the whiteboard now and do a couple of sample problems dealing with electric fields. And we'll start with some easy ones and then um, increase the difficulty level. Thank you. Now, the electric field is the region around a charged particle that's going to affect other charges. And our equation is e equals f over q. Now, we could put our vector symbols over the E and the F because it's a vector quantity, so direction matters. Now remember, our equation for F is KQQ over R squared. So if we replace the F with that, we end up getting KQQ over R squared over Q. Well, one of the Q's cancels, and you're left with KQ over R squared. Now the difficulty with this equation, since we have both forms, is that the Q is different in each instance. The first one, it's the Q of the charge in the field, which we often call the test charge. For the other one, the Q is the charge of the object producing the field. Now, of course, a test charge can also be producing an electric field, but usually we have a small test charge, so it's insignificant compared to the actual source. So the source may be a Van de Graaff generator. The test charge is a single um, particle itself, maybe an electron or a proton. Now, remember, the test charge is always going to be a positive charge when we wor worry about direction, but that's for later. All right now, here's our equations, and let's look at two sample problems um, dealing with different objects and the electric fields produced. All right, here's an electric field sample problem. We have two positive charges, one centimeter apart. And the first one has a charge of 20 microcoulombs. The other one has a charge of 15 nanocoulombs. The 15 nanocoulombs is the test charge. And what we're going to do is figure out the field strength at the test charge. So we have a couple of options. And what I'm going to do is use my E equals KQ over R squared. And then what I'll do is I'll solve it the other way using the force. But let's start with KQ over R squared. If this is the source, what that's going to do is produce an electric field emanating outward in concentric circles. And the electric field in this case, anything at this point is going to be affected by that. So K is 9 times 10 to the 9, Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. Q is going to be for the source. Now it's 20 and micro is 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. It's on the reference table. And then R is 1 centimeter. So 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters squared. So what's the electric field at that point? 9 E9 times 20 E negative 6 divided by 1 E negative 2 squared. 
And I have quite a big number, 1.8 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, what are our units for electric field? It's newtons per coulomb. So that's one way we can solve it. Now, if we wanted to find the force acting on that test charge, what we could do is do E equals F over Q. So let's do that now, even though it's not asked. E equals F over Q. We know the electric field strength. The charge is the 15 nanocoulombs. So if we multiply the two, we could find the force acting on them. Now that would be 1.8 times 10 to the 9, which is still in my calculator, times 15, and nano is e to the negative 9, and I'm going to end up getting a force of 27 newtons. Now I wonder if Coulomb's law would also work with that problem. Let's reset and try that. Now we just calculated the force between these two objects to be 27 newtons, which was quite large, and we use the electric field equation to do that. What if we use Coulomb's law? kqq over r squared. Now k is 9 times 10 to the 9, newton meters squared over coulomb squared. The two q's are 20 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs and 15 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs and that's all over 0.01 meters squared. Let's try it. 9e9 times 20e negative 6 times 15 e negative 9 all divided by 0.01 squared and we get 27 look at that so even though the number is quite large the values work out so either method gets us the same result and remember a lot of times in physics you can get the same answer using more than one method and that's what's important is to figure out what method works best in your brain as long as we arrive at the same answer using a logical series of steps, that's, that's perfectly fine. All right, our second sample problem is we have two charges, a plus 5 microcoulomb, and a minus three microcoulomb charge and they are five millimeters apart and what we want to do is find the electric field right in the middle now the electric field in the middle means that each is only going to be two and a half millimeters from each of the objects so what we need to do is find the electric field caused by both and then figure out what would happen if we place a positive test charge because the Direction of the electric field is always based on a positive test charge. Now, just doing that at the beginning, let's look at object A and B. We'll call them A and B. A positive source is going to push a test charge to the right, and a negative source is going to pull a positive test charge. So what we're going to do is find the electric fields, add them together, and then it's going to point to the right. So we already know our final direction. Now let's find the numbers that are going to be added together. Each is going to contribute to the equation, kq over r squared. So let's look at a. We have k. We have 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And we have 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. For the other one, it's going to be the same format. 9 times 10 to the 9. times 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs all over 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. So we'll call them A and B just for simplicity. All right, 9E9 times 5E negative 6 divided by 2.5E negative 3 squared. I'm getting 7.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the electric field's a newton per coulomb. And then for the other one, 9e9 times 3e to the negative 6. 
equals, and then divided by 2.5e negative 3 squared, almost forgot the squared, 4.32 times 10 to the, and I assume it's 9, but let's check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay. Now, since we're going to add these two numbers, I have that plus 7.2e9, and I'm getting for my final electric field, 1.152 times 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb. So each is going to contribute at this point to the right. So we'll say to the right as our direction. What would a proton do? We'll be pushed to the right. Okay, for this one, what we're going to do is find the electric field at the midpoint between a proton and an electron. Now, a proton is 1.6 to the negative 19 coulombs, and an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The difference is that the proton is positive and the electron is negative. Now, the proton is going to push a positive test charge to the right, and an electron is going to pull the positive test charge. So all we have to do is use our equation equals kq over r. Both of the objects will have the same value, magnitude at that point, and we're going to double it, and then it'll be pointing to the right. So 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared over coulomb squared. Q is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And the nanometer has to be cut in half because we're halfway uh, if we're in the midpoint. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And of course, the equation has the r squared, which I forgot to write right, not right there. So finding E, 9E9 times 1.6E negative 19. Divide that by 0.5E negative 9 squared. And you have 5.76 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 newtons per coulomb. So if I multiply that by 2, because we're going to double it, times 2, we have 1.152 times 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb to the right. That is the value of the electric field at the midpoint between those two charged particles.